I want to reprogram your brain. I, I want to change everything, every crazy old mindset you have in your brain of wholesaling real estate. And I really want to change it so you can start making hundreds of thousands of dollars every single month like me, like so many wholesalers out here. And really for you to actually go out here and start making as much money as possible in your wholesaling real estate business. I truly believe there's 10 rules, 10 limiting beliefs, uh, 10 things most wholesalers have in their mind that is limiting them from making millions of dollars in wholesaling real estate and scaling up their business. Uh, this is definitely a video that I've needed to done for a very long time. This is one that's taken me years, uh, half a decade uh, of just struggles and trials and tribulations and uh, really mindset stuff that has made me successful in my wholesaling business and definitely something I feel like it's going to help you in your real estate wholesaling business. So if you don't know me, my name is Zach Ginn. I currently run a seven-figure wholesaling operation doing hundreds of thousands of dollars every single month in wholesaling real estate. So you ask, what does this 23-year-old kid have to say to me about scaling up a wholesaling operation? Well, what I have to tell you from that is I actually do it. I know how to do it, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it today. Uh, so that's what I do, guys. This is my YouTube channel where I'm going to break it down. So I'm going to break down today the 10 most limiting beliefs you probably have in your wholesaling business, uh, 10 things that most people think wrong in wholesaling and how to overcome them so you can make as much money as possible in wholesaling real estate. So one thing I want to do before we get into it, like, first of all, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. I, I think that's the first thing you need to start doing. Uh, I always ask everyone to do it, but I do highly recommend you do it. Uh, we're coming back at a live stream today uh, in the new studio for me. So this is actually at my house. So pretty cool. How did I learn how to get really good at wholesaling? I did a lot of wrong things first and I did a lot of things the stupid way. And once I did things the stupid way, I figured out just do the opposite of those things. Uh, one episode of Seinfeld that I love is when George Costanza, who's sort of like the guy that you sort of make fun of a little, right? Um, he could never pick up girls or, you know, get a good promotion as job. So he decided to do everything opposite what he would have done. You know, he didn't want to go say hi to the waitress or whatever. He would go do it, right? Uh, he decided he didn't, was going to do this thing at work. He did the opposite thing at work and he got all these promotions, right? He just basically did everything that was opposite because he was supposed to be, you know, stupid. Uh, so not stupid, but like, you know, clumsy. So he did everything the opposite of what he would do. And he got very, very uh, rich and it really fun. And that's sort of the point. And that's what we're going to break down. So let's reprogram your brain for wholesaling real estate. Uh, I'm going to show you the biggest mistakes people do and why you're not doing it. So you can sort of have the mindset of how to make hundreds of thousands of dollars and how to make millions of dollars, guys, because once you have the mindset of somebody who's rich or successful in wholesaling real estate, pretty much what follows there is with the action. So you are what you think and what you think you take those actions. And once you take those actions, you start becoming rich because you could take all the money I have, drop me off in anywhere in the United States, and I'm going to start virtually wholesaling zero dollars because I have the right mindset and I have the right knowledge. And that's the thing about most successful wholesalers. I know millionaire wholesalers that like you take everything from them, you can drop them off anywhere. They're going to make it back again because it's the mindset, right? Their brain is programmed the right way of knowing how to become successful. And when it comes to leveraging your business and making millions of dollars and even, you know, 20, 30, $40,000 a month, you have to fix your mindset. So that's what we're going to break down today. I think there's going to be a really powerful video. So uh, let's sort of break this down. And really break down the solutions, everything for it. So I think the first issue, let, let's talk about from a bad perspective, right? And, and let's get into a little more, more or less of how it all works. So let's get into the first one, right? Number one, doing everything yourself. And what do I mean by doing every, everything yourself, right? So a person who thinks bad, uh, a person with a poor mentality, a mentality of not being successful, right? They're going to want to do everything themselves, right? And they are not going to seek leverage. And I think this is the first thing you should understand, but you need to seek leverage in wholesaling real estate. And once you get to a point in your wholesaling business, doing everything yourself actually becomes a detriment. It's actually something bad. It actually doesn't help you at all. It actually hurts you to act uh, in a self-interest of doing everything yourself. So cold calling yourself, going on appointments yourself, finding cash buyers yourself. Doing this is a poor mindset once you start hitting a big range. Now, if you're starting in your business, you have not made $100,000, $200,000 a year. Hey, you need to learn how to do it all yourself first, and then you can hire people to do those strategies for you. Because really, if you don't know how to cold call, how are you going to train a cold caller to do really well? Like your, your success is going to be there, and 
you're probably not going to be as successful as you should be in your wholesaling real estate operations. So that is the point starting out. Like you want to start doing the things over and over and over again that it takes to be successful, then teach someone to do that for you and they're going to be good. Guys, the point of leveraging out is there, there's a lot of ways to leverage out your business for success, right? And I feel like labor is going to be the first one, right? So if it, it is called, uh, I've, I've heard people call it the 60% rule. And I think you really, in wholesaling, you can really make it 80 if you really want. But let's do the 60% rule, right? So if I'm cold calling and if I'm cold calling myself, I'm at 100% capacity, right? Now, if I have one VA I hire and they're at 60%, that means they're going to do 60% of my efforts. And that means they're going to make 40, probably 40% less than what I'm doing. And that's not good, right? But if I hire two VAs at 60%, their output, so if I can do 10 leads a week in my cold calling, that means a VA is going to get six leads a week, which is actually worse. My business is going to make less money. Oh my gosh, I got to do everything myself, right? But if you think about it like this, this is how a rich wholesaler is going to think. You know, once they once they have money, they can actually hire VAs, do things like that. If you have two VAs who get six a week, that means, and they're like a fourth of the cost of what you are, right? And if you can go on appointments, that means you're going to get 12 leads a week, which is going to be two more than you, which is actually 20% more efficient actually hiring somebody out. That is the point of leveraging, right? That's why... A lot of people like making millions of dollars, they don't do it all themselves. I don't do it all myself, right? I even had Rick with me when we were partnering up and then we got even more people and we made even more money. That, that's sort of the point here, guys. It's all about leveraging. It's all about knowing how to do it the right way. So yes, you need to do everything yourself beginning, but it becomes very toxic when you have to do everything yourself when you're scaling up, right? And that's sort of the point here, guys. You cannot do everything yourself. It's gonna make you poor, all right? And so rule number two, Listen to poor wholesalers and what they think, right? So this is a very, very fun and interesting uh, strategy. And I, I don't know how to say this gracefully the right way, but like if you've ever had a lot of friends that, you know, not entrepreneurial, they might not make, make a lot of money. They've struggled with money their whole life and you get financial advice from them. It's not going to do well, right? So it's like, you know, you're playing basketball and you're good at basketball and then you, you listen to the guy that, you know, kind of the uh, armchair quarterback type thing that's going to tell you how to play basketball. He's never played a day of basketball in his life. He's just watched basketball. It's not going to do too well, right? You want to listen to people that are very successful with it, right? So if you try to learn from people on cold calling who actually suck at cold calling that just want to give you advice for them to feel good about themselves, your results are going to suck, right? And if you listen to a wholesaler on YouTube that actually doesn't run a real wholesaling real estate business, doesn't do any deals, doesn't have any proven results, you're going to get the same results, right? So when I tell you how to wholesale real estate and people who follow my advice, they all post checks. You see it on my Facebook group. You see it on podcasts. You see it everywhere. When I say something, like it works because I actually know what I'm doing, right? So if you listen to people that aren't making a lot of money, you're going to end up like them, right? Because you are the sum of the five, 10 people you hang out with. And I'm not your friends, but like, don't get your financial advice from them, right? Because if you think like somebody that's not making a lot of money, you're going to act and you're going to get the results of somebody that, right? It's, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, having that lifestyle inflation. Once you start making more money, you start spending more money on crazy stuff, right? Like that is not the point here. That, that's not the point I'm trying to convey here. But like, if you want to act poor in wholesaling, you're going to act and talk to people that aren't doing well. And then you're going to start doing what they're doing, right? Give up after the fourth or fifth list. Go after the same list that the average guru tells you. Do do this, this, and like do the stuff that's not getting really good results. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people are listening to gurus that aren't doing any money and aren't doing deals. And then they're struggling and they're in the rigmarole of wholesaling real estate and they don't know why they're not becoming successful. And you know, it's true. It's because you're listening to somebody who's broke. You're listening to somebody that doesn't make a lot of money in wholesaling real estate. And you get shocked that you're not like them, right? It's really funny and it's very interesting that so many people get shocked at what I say about like that, but it is the honest truth. If you hang out with wholesalers that aren't doing well and you start doing what they're doing, you're, you're gonna, like, guys, I, I'm saying this respectfully, like I'm not here to judge anybody, but like this isn't the last analogy and I don't know how to say this the right way, but like if you hang out with people that are overweight and you start eating the same way they do, you're probably gonna start looking like them. If you start hanging out with people that are like crazy bodybuilders that you know don't do steroids, but like they're jacked, and you start hanging out with them and you start working out with them, you start eating the same way, they, they, you're going to end up like them, right? If you, if you hang out with someone that's really smart and you start doing what they do every day, you're going to end up smarter, right? And if you end up with somebody that's not smart and they do dumb decisions, 
uh, let's say someone that's like a criminal, if you hang out with all criminals and you start hanging out with them, you start doing what they do, you're probably going to end up like them, right? And if you start hanging out with someone that's generous, caring, that volunteers, you're probably going to end up like them, right? And I think one thing that's always interesting is if you ever have a group of friends, right? Go see your friend and who they marry and you're going to figure out pretty quick or whoever they date, they start acting like them a lot more because that's who they hang out with the most. And it's an interesting rule and it's a great concept you should learn as an entrepreneur and just in wholesaling real estate in general. But like you are who you hang out with and who you think with. So uh, take that advice accordingly, right? And the next one is, this is another one that it, it, it's the funniest thing ever. It, you probably got an ad before you saw this, but like, you know, a poor mindset is, you know, you know, hey, I'm going to try to invent a new way of doing wholesaling. You know, I think the way they're doing wholesaling right now is not right. And I'm just going to invent a brand new way to wholesale houses. And I think this is funny because if you try to reinvent the wheel, you're just going to be in a wheel yourself trying to reinvent everything, right? Like you're not an inventor, okay? Wholesaling real estate is a simple process of buying something and selling something for a profit. There's not really, like if I look at every strategy of wholesaling real estate outside the marketing, right? I, I feel, I see a lot of newbies trying to reinvent a new way of wholesaling, right? I see guys doing innovations. I see people trying uh, these crazy new strategies for wholesaling real estate. And uh, a lot of them turn into MLMs. A lot of them turn into like, you know, crazy little schemes. They make little coins for wholesaling. Like they, they try a new way of doing things. And the honest truth is like, if you're just trying to make a hundred K this year in wholesaling real estate, right? Like don't try to reinvent things, right? Best case scenario, you invent a new way of wholesaling, which is great. But I could tell you it's the richest people in real estate. The richest, okay, hold up. Let's talk about the richest people in the entire world, all right? Let, let's talk about three really rich people, the, th the top three richest people in the entire world. Okay, let, let's actually pop up. And I, I want to do this because I think this is funny, right? Uh, let, let's, let me just show you richest uh, people in the entire world, all right? And let's go down the list really quick. And let's sort of break this down. So for 2022, all right. So let me just show you really quick so you understand that the top 10 richest people in the entire world didn't invent something new. And what do I mean by that? So let, let, let me just show you really quick. So we're here, all right, and we're here are the 10 richest people in, in the entire world, all right? Now, as you see here, we have number one, Elon Musk. Elon Musk did Tesla, okay? And what you got to understand about Tesla is a lot of the old timers out here understand the old uh, electric cars, right? Electric cars been a thing before Elon Musk was even born, right? People came out with electric cars in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Elon Musk did not invent uh, the electric car, right? He did not invent space travel. He took space travel. He took the electric car and made it his own and made it better. He took what was already there and improved it significantly. Jeff Bezos, Amazon. People were buying and selling things online all the time. He, he did that. He perfected the shipping pretty much and perfected the logistics, made a lot of money. Bernard Alnard, which is a uh, Louis Vuitton guy, he did not invent fashion, but he figured out how to dominate the fashion industry by studying it. He didn't redo fashion, but he made fashion another thing. Bill Gates literally bought, um, bought a fit. When he created Microsoft, he actually bought somebody's software for, I think, $50,000, $60,000, like a Pirates of Silicon Valley. He bought their software. And then made it his own and then improved upon that. And that was Microsoft. Warren Buffett was not the first hedge fund type manager guy to manage other people's money, right? He just took that and got really good at it. Uh, Larry Bage and Sergey, um, they're a different story, right? They didn't invent the search engine AOL as a thing, but they improved upon it. Uh, Oracle, uh, I don't know Larry Ellison too well. Steve Ballmer, Microsoft guy. And then uh, Reliance Industries, uh, that's French to me. So I... You know, I, I don't know that, but like, if you look at like the top five richest people in the entire world, and especially for you, like in wholesaling real estate, like I look at the top five richest people I know in wholesaling, right? Like they didn't invent wholesaling. They figured out the top 10 wholesalers they knew, figured out their strategies, and then built upon that and made it even better. You know, uh, I think so many wholesalers get that really confused. Cause like when I go to a new wholesaling market, like for virtual wholesaling, I figure out what's the best, like four or five wholesalers in that uh, market. And then it, it's so funny, but like I figure out what the, so when I went to Knoxville, Tennessee, I figured out, okay, 
what are the best wholesalers in Knoxville doing? All right, they're cold calling, they're texting pre foreclosures, and then uh, I think they were drawing for dollars, right? So like, I figured out what I could do and what I couldn't do, and then I just did what they did, and my systems were better than them, and I basically dominated, right? Um, it, it, it's so funny in wholesaling real estate that like so many people try to reinvent everything and try to become the new new person on the block, right? But like, even like the richest real estate investors in the world, right? Like they never invented a new way of doing real estate. They just, they did with the way that the traditional people are doing it and just made the systems and they did it a lot better than the average person. And that's honestly what I, what I'm doing currently, right? Like I'm not inventing a uh, wholesaling education, right? I just think it's so, I'm, I'm so sick that everyone's going out here and trying to sell wholesaling courses that like, I just basically doing the course thing, but I'm doing it all for free and I give it all out for free. And uh, it's kind of crazy the way I do it, but I think it changes a lot of lives. So that is kind of what I do, and it, it's pretty cool. The next one here is comparing your results to other people. And I, I I always love this quote, and this is the absolute truest quote you can ever find in life, but like comparison is the thief of joy. And I think so many people like to compare themselves to others, and you got to understand you're on your own journey in life, right? So when I was 20, sorry, when I was 20 years old, when I uh, made, became a millionaire, I didn't compare myself to a 50 or 60 year old millionaire, right? And be like, oh, I'm hot stuff. I'm the man. I'm a millionaire. I'm 20 years old. I'm the greatest person in the world. You know, you, you can't beat me. I'm the great. No, like, I can, I, and I didn't feel like I didn't have this big ego. And I've looked at all my peers at 20 years old. Like, they weren't millionaires either. But like, they, they weren't millionaires. And I didn't feel like I was better than them, right? And that helped me just be like, okay. Roger that. I'm just keep keep going and make more money, right? And I didn't compare myself to like what Kylie Jenner when she was 20. I think she was a billionaire, so I didn't make that. I didn't. See, I use that for inspiration, but I didn't do that to make myself feel bad, right? Like, oh no, I, I'm terrible, right? Like, I don't know when I did YouTube when Mr. Beast at 23 was at like what 50 million, uh, 50 what billion subscribers, right? Uh, I I didn't do that to make me feel bad, right? I or is it million? I think it's million, right? I think he's at a hundred million, but like he had a 50 billion, right? Um, but like billion knows that that's too much, right? It was million, right? Yeah. So he, when he had like 50 million, when he was like 23 years old I was, and I'm 23, I'm like, I'm not comparing myself to that. Right. And truly you got to understand in life, especially when it comes to making money, you are not here to compare your results to somebody else's. You, the only thing you should compare yourself to is the person you were yesterday. Were you a better man or woman than you were yesterday? Did you make more money this year than you did last year? If you can just beat yourself and become just a better person than what you were in the past, that's all you need, right? Like we're all in different journeys. We, we all have different things. We've all grew up in different style, like backgrounds and uh, neighborhoods and like all this stuff. Like I'm not here to become better than you, right? Because definitely people had a lot worse circumstances starting up in wholesaling than me. And a lot of people had better circumstances. I, I don't care. It's just where I was at and am I, am I improving slowly on that process? And sometimes it's not about money. It's about happiness and things like that. But like in wholesaling real estate specifically, you just want to become a better version of yourself than you were last year or the month before, or the day before, or the week before, right? And I think so many people get in this rat race and they get upset and then they're mentally screwed up. And then when they're mentally screwed up, they can't cold call. They get frustrated and then it's just a downward spiral. Uh, they compare the results to other people and it, it is a good indicator, but it's only going to feed your ego comparing yourself to somebody because you're either going to feel better about yourself or you're going to feel worse about yourself. So I, I, I don't, I don't find that game interesting. I, I don't think people should be doing that, but I, I just see so many wholesalers doing this and it really upsets me uh, that, I mean, you can compare yourself to me, but uh, it drives me crazy. Right? So like, I think so many people get really freaked out over it. Um, so like I, don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare your journey to my journey. I, I won't, I'm not going to compare my journey to your journey, right? Like we're all on our different journey and path. And honestly, I know we all look to be like, oh, we're, we're going against the gurus. We're going against our competition. Like they're, they're going to, gurus are going to keep doing what they're doing. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And if I can personally help more people out, that's a win for me, right? Like I just, I think so many people get that really confused. So the next poor mindset thing I always see a lot, and this is really upsetting, I think, for a lot of people, but like this is just making excuses. And this is really, and I'm not, uh, so I, I want to clarify when I say this, I'm not making fun of people that don't make a lot of money or wholesaling that are poor or any of this stuff. But like when I look at the 
the, the vast, you know, statistic and demographics of wholesalers, I look at the ones that don't get their first deal and I look at the ones that get their first deal. And I look at the ones that didn't make hundred K this year and the people that did make hundred K this year. And I really think to myself, like Zach, what's the difference between these two types of people? And what I've always found is because I have hundreds of thousands of students that I teach for free. What I see is the ones that always fail are the ones that constantly make excuses. The ones that constantly complain to me, the ones that constantly find an excuse of why they're not being successful, constantly fit, like say, this is the reason why I'm not successful. This is the reason why I'm not great. This is the reason why I'm not this, this or that, right? Like I'm always finding excuses with people that aren't doing well. And the ones that always do well, you know, they sort of have that Roger that mentality where like whatever happens, they're like, okay, how are we going to figure out a solution to get out of this, right? They think pretty logically with this, right? And I find this with a lot of military people, right? And a lot of uh, ex-athletes, right? We have a lot of, you know, ex, not NBA, but like a lot, a lot of college basketball players, a lot of former NFL players, and a lot of them, and a lot of like college wrestlers, a, a lot of uh, collegiate athletes, right? And a lot of professional athletes, and they start getting the wholesale and they do really well because um, I've actually had, you know, some professional boxers reach out to me that got their first, third, fourth check, and they don't hop on here, but like they, they always DM me. And the coolest part about that is like their mentality is so much different because like you talk to a professional boxer, they get punched in the face and they lose a fight. The, the, most of them, if they don't have a bad attitude, are like, oh, I lost that fight because of the ref. Or no. They're like, no, it's because of me and I need to become better. And they get punched in the face. And once you get punched in the face, they're like, you know what? I'm not going to take that. I'm going to learn from that and, and just get better from it, right? And that's how a lot of people that are successful in maybe athletics or some of that's successful in, you know, uh, a, a mental challenge or like, you know, intelligence type activity, right? They learn from their mistakes and they get better, right? Like if you talk to a really good student, like a, you know, all a ace, like someone really, really good college that like gets really good grades, like they don't make excuses why they do good on tests. They just get better from it and learn from the mistakes. Right. And I just, I, I want everyone to understand that like you have to become accountable to yourself. And if you don't come accountable to yourself, how are you going to be ac accountable to employees if you want to become a millionaire in wholesaling, right? And I think so many people take that excuse as just the easy way out. And it, it takes a lot of effort. It, it takes a lot of courage to go out here and say, you know what? I messed up. I need to do better. And a lot of people don't have the ego. Uh, they have too big of an ego to do that, right? And your ego is going to be your enemy uh, for this, right? And I see a lot of people use their ego for success, but they also use it for, to their detriment. And it's really dependent on how you're going to do it. But I do hope that you come out here and you just start becoming more accountable to your actions, right? Because where you're at financially right now in your life, like currently as of this video, whenever or whenever you're watching this, you're at where you're at in your life right now based on the actions you've taken in the past year. And there, there's no excuse around that. Like, I know this might have happened or that might have happened or that, but like it happened, right? And you have to take accountability for what happens, right? Like, hey, you know, God forbid you get struck by lightning and, you know, you, you, you can't work for three, three months and now you got no money. Like, it's not an excuse. Like it happened, right? Like you're not gonna make excuses for it, but like it did happen and this is why you have no money, right? But like it's directly on what happened in your life, right? And for a lot of people, you know, something crazy, crazy situation happened to you, but like, where you're at right now is based on your thoughts and your actions and what you've done. And even your actions that got you struck by lightning, it was what you did though. And you do have to take accountability for it. So if you walked around lightning and you get a hit and like you're out of work for a couple months, like it is something you've did, even though it, like it should have not happened, it happened, right? And you got to become accountable for that and go after it, right? A lot of crazy stuff happened in my life. It was out of my control and I, I became hundred percent accountable for it. And even if it wasn't my fault to a point, I, I take, uh, responsibility for things. Right. And it changes a lot, especially with employees, right? My employee did something wrong. I, I, you know what? He worked for me. I hired him or her. That was my fault. And I take full accountability for it. Right. Uh, so I, I think that's the way a lot of people who don't do well, they always like to make excuses and it never works for them. Uh, once you quit the excuses and you sort of say more or less, you know, Roger that, and you just keep trucking, just keep trucking forward. You're going to be fine. Right. And what you'll figure out is when you stop taking excuses and you start putting more action in your wholesaling business, you start cold calling more, you start going to more appointments, you start closing more deals, you're going to figure out you don't get as lucky. 
uh, you get more lucky. I think a lot of people like the excuses of, oh, this Zach made a lot of money because he got lucky on his first couple of deals. Or he got lucky on a hundred thousand dollar deal. And yeah, I did get lucky finding that deal. Like it is, it is a game of chance to a point, but like the more I cold call, the more appointments me and my team go on, the more acquisitions people I hire, the more appointments we go on, the more lucky I get. Right. And it's kind of funny, but like the more you work out, the luckier you get of getting more jacked or more muscular. And if you want to get really good at running, the chance of you beating your personal best for a marathon or, you know, like a four mile race or a 5k, the more you run every day and the more you train hard, the luckier you're going to get at beating that score. And you can use luck for anything. You can change the word luck for anything you want, but like luck to a point <laughs> comes down to how much you're going to work. So how lucky you want to get in wholesaling. You can be lazy, do a call, get your first deal. I've seen it happen before, but it's, luck, it's very rare. And you get a lot more luckier the more calls and action and effort and training you take. Uh, so that, that's one thing I could tell you. And I just, I think so many people get really confused with that, right? So um, I just want to understand that, guys. Like, this is a big one. You cannot make excuses or change into it. Now, the next one, and this is a wholesaling specific issue I've seen. And this is one I do want to address today in this video. And of course, I get in a lot of trouble for saying these things. And uh, a lot of wholesalers don't like it when I bring this up. But I'm going to break it down right now. So many guys and gals out here, they want the quick, they want the easy solution. They want that thing that's going to be the easy thing, right? Like you probably got an ad before this video about the easy way of wholesaling. You know, I wholesale for two years and I made zero dollars. And little, little did I know there was an easy solution that changed everything where all I had to do was the Zach method or the Gin method and wholesaling was a breeze and I made millions of dollars and I didn't have to work. Guys, I can tell you right now, there is nothing. And I'm telling you right now, like I can look in anyone's eyes right now. There is nothing. I'm not even talking about real estate. Okay, I'm talking about life. There is nothing in life right now. Nothing. Nothing in life right now that is great that that you can't that you can't work hard for. And what do I mean by this? There's nothing amazing in life right now that you can't have that's super valued that doesn't come with hard work. And you can think of anything you want, but like you have to work hard for the greatest things in life. And a lot of great things in life are free, but it's not free to a point, right? Like there is a sacrifice. And even if it's like doing X, Y, or Z, like even if it comes like walking down the street, uh, walking down the street and having a good old stroll in the park, right? Guys, if you live in the United States of America right now and you're just strolling down the park and you're having a great time, this is the best, like you live your best life on a beach right now and you're enjoying it, right? And you're living the great life. That has come from at a sacrifice, you know? And I don't want to get all like, you know, I don't, I don't know how to describe this, but like, you know, if you want to go outside right now and enjoy the freedoms and life you have in the United States, like there's a lot of military people right now that sacrificed everything for you just to have the enjoyment of going out here and not being an award torn country in the United States, right? A lot of people sacrifice great things for you to enjoy the great things. You can just go out in the street and feel safe, right? A lot of things in life that you have to earn are going to take work. And especially when it comes to money, you're not going to make money without working hard. And I hate to say this. And let's say you do the lottery. You still have to work hard getting the right numbers. And getting the right no numbers comes to luck. But if you ever, if you look at a draw, right, the average person that makes a million dollars, right, there's probably, let's say, a million people that make a million dollars this year. Maybe 15 of them are from the lottery. You look at the other, you know, 99.99%, they all have to work their butts off. So why do you think you're an exception of you don't have to work hard? You do. There's no excuse around it. And why is a guru telling you that if you do this new strategy for wholesaling real estate, life is going to be easy and everything's going to be easy? Guys, if there was a secret strategy to make you know $100,000 a year and you work four hours a week, guy one would have done it, then guy two would have done it, and then gal three would have done it, and then it just everyone would do it. Guys, it's sort of like a Ponzi scheme to a point. Like, I think a lot of people sort of look at that. Like, you know, I guess if you have a little Ponzi scheme going, you can make that work. But like, 
at the end of the day, it's all going to collapse. It's a house of cards. And I remember starting out in SMS text blasting when I just started out, when I was just getting into it, like when it first came out, like the first text blasting companies were coming out. It was probably one of the easiest solutions I've ever done. I, I spent, I think, three, four, five hundred dollars a month, and I was getting three to four deals a month. And all I had unlimited texting, and it was five hundred bucks. And I sent, I, I, I almost sent ten thousand texts a day, and it was for five hundred bucks for a month. It was insane. It, it was utterly insane. And I was making more money than I could ever imagine from just that cheap little strategy. And then, obviously, that easy solution lasted like three or four months, and then everyone started doing it, and then it got saturated. And I think a lot of people don't know that when it comes to cold calling or I've seen wholesaling happen like that too. But like you have to work hard for the best things in life. And a lot of the best things in life require money. And to get that money, you have to work your butt off. And there's no easy way around what you're doing. And if you want to make a million dollars this year in wholesaling real estate, scale up, make hundreds of thousand dollars per month, there's no easy solution here. You're going to have to work hard. The next one here is believing your hot stuff. And I see this is the collapse of a lot of men and women, uh, mostly men, <laughs> I will say. Mo mostly men have this problem. And I think it's hardwired in our DNA. But if you believe you're hot stuff and you have this huge, massive ego, you think you are the greatest person in the entire world, no one is better than you. And that's not confidence. I tell you, I, I seriously can still stand here today. And I'm not saying this with an ego. I truly believe no one in YouTube, uh, no one in wholesaling is probably better than cold calling Fizbo's than me or just cold calling in general. I truly believe that. I know how to close my sellers. I don't think no one took the hours and dedication I did starting out, especially to this point, than me over a five year horizon, all day, every day. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts. And you guys see it, right? Now, I don't, I've never said I was the best cold caller, but in wholesaling, I, I, I truly do believe that. But also, I, I've never, came out here and claimed I'm the greatest, greatest wholesaler of all time because I, I know so many people are way better than me at wholesaling, okay? But they're at the point where they're trying to make, you know, tens and tens and tens of millions. Like, how am I going to make 20, 30, 40 million dollars this year, right? I'm not that low yet, working my way up. But like, if you believe you're hot stuff, if you have this massive ego, you're going to get destroyed, right? And you look at the greatest people on earth, uh, they never had that ego, right? They had the confidence that they were great, but they didn't think they were the hot stuff. And once you start thinking you're the hot stuff, that's when your blinders start coming up. You know, if you start doing things that are bad in your business and you think you are like this crazy big king, you're going to get humbled real quick. And that's always the big problem. You know, Blockbuster had the, had probably the biggest example of this. They thought they were the greatest, you know, ever. And they, they didn't care about what Netflix was doing, right? They didn't even look at Netflix's direction. And this is the part of kind of, you know, looking into your other markets and seeing what other people are doing, not because you're comparing yourself, but you want to see what everyone else around your market is doing, right? And once you start figuring that out and you're like, no, nah, I ain't going to do this digital thing. The digital thing's stupid. What I'm doing works and I'm the best and I know everything. Once you start thinking you know everything and you start getting those narcissistic personality type things, you're going to do bad. And I, I think that's one thing I've always done because like I've always shifted, right? I'm like, okay. You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of good right here, but I see what other people do. Like I've had, I, guys, I've looked into every type of marketing strategy. I've seen people do pay-per-click, PPC, SEO. And I'm like, you know what? Facebook ads. I was like, you know what? Let's drop four or five K in Facebook ads and really do this the right way. And I've had people look it over like the, the top people. And I'm like, you know what? I, I'm just going to test it out because I truly believe I'm like, Facebook ads are, are going to suck. Right. But I had the mindset. We're going to try it. And we're going to do it. Guys, I thought SMS text boss was like, going to be iffy. And they did really well because I didn't have my ego in it. And like, I got to test it out. I want to see if this is going to work because if it works really well, it's going to make a ton of money. If it doesn't work, Hey, I'm out three, four grand, whatever. Facebook ads actually did some deals. I, I sort of broke even, I, I think ended up making a low money off of it, but like for the effort, I, I call it a loss. Didn't work out. SEO is okay. Um, SEO is a game where I truly it's not worth the cost because it used to be sort of free and then it costs money. And then you got the SEO guys. It's not worth it. Pay-per-clicks just, it, it was actually really good in the beginning and then it got really more expensive and now it's kind of getting okay. But like compared to drawing for dollars, cold calling, it's not even the same realm because of the expense and cost of it. Uh, but like if you have this big ego, you think you know everything, then you're not going to look at the new strategies that come up and then you're going to fail. 
And this is when a lot of people start thinking they know everything and it, it just utterly fails, right? Uh, so you don't want to have that big stuff or think you're hot stuff, have this big ego because you're going to start ending up making employees bitter with it. Uh, employees don't like when you have that big ego at all. Like, I'm just sorry. Like that, that boss is the big ego. I think everyone worked a job once where they had that. I had that. Uh, I, I hated my boss for that, right? And I'm not talking for like at a grocery store. And I, I remember having this customer service guy. Holy moly, he was making $18 an hour. That man thought he was king of the castle. Like screaming at me, do this, do this, do that. Like people just want to have power in their life when they don't have power anywhere else. Like a lot of bullies do that too. But I was like, geez, they all want to do it right. I, I think just think it's funny. So guys, just understand that. Uh, you don't see a lot of really rich people, these big massive egos like that, that are successful for a while. There is some, there is a good amount, but a lot more, a lot more humble and humility. And when they have the humility, they can kind of look at the entire market and then kind of do analysis and do really well, right? Uh, I think that's very important. Like Steve Jobs was really good at this. He was really good at looking around and just making his better. But it, he was not the best boss type guy, but like he didn't have the ego where he thought he was better than everyone. And I, a little bit, but not too much. But like he was still able to look around and he didn't get in his own way, right? And I think that's something really important, right? Because he had some key players at Apple with him that helped him scale up. Um, I, I just think it's very, very, very important on there, right? Let's see. All right. Next one here is here's another poor thing. Uh, a lot of bad things people do is they treat their employees like entrepreneurs. And this is a big one. And this is one that doesn't get talked about enough at wholesaling. And this is one I do want to teach you guys. But like a lot of people that fail, quote unquote, like fail at, you know, scaling up an operation for wholesaling, they treat their employees like entrepreneurs. You know, they, they pay them. Uh, <laughs> it's always funny because like they they sort of just give them a task and say you know you should work as hard as i do and no i'm not gonna like your employee's not gonna work as hard as you do okay like if i used to work 100 hours a week i don't expect my employee to work 100 hours a week because they're trying to become employed for the safety and convenience of a job they want to have a life outside they want to do all these things like they're not going to work as hard and they don't have that buy-in in your business right they don't have that buy-in right there are companies out here that do profit sharing and revenue sharing, which is an interesting model. And uh, it's definitely a really cool one. But like most people treat their employees like entrepreneurs. And that does not do well. That does not jive well because once you treat them like an entrepreneur, they're going to act like an entrepreneur. And you want them to be like an employee because once they're an entrepreneur, they're going to be like, well, you know what? Since I'm getting paid like an entrepreneur, I have these crazy hours. I work like crazy. I'm just going to do my own thing. And then they bounce out of town and then you just – you have turnover, and that's the hardest part about running a wholesaling operation is that turnover with your employees. And so when you treat them like an actual, you know, an employee, and you give them the time freedom, you actually care about them. I think a lot of uh, entrepreneurs they care mostly only about the money, and I think a lot of bosses uh, in wholesaling they hire someone they think they only want the money, and then they start caring about like why they're doing the job, why they want to do, what makes them happy in the job. Like, is there anything we can do to help them? Is there any issues they have? When's their birthday, right? Stuff like that. I can tell you straight up right now, if you don't do this, you are going to fail. And I, I think you have to start doing this the right way. You have to treat your employees like employees. If you treat them like entrepreneurs, you're going to fail, okay? Why don't you uh, do? Why don't you work an extra five hours longer for free? Like just, guys, people have families, people have lives. You know, they're not working as an entrepreneur crazy like you did starting out and don't expect them to expect them to do their job, do it within their means and do what that makes them happy. Most people enjoy their job or their work, not because of the pay they're getting. A lot of them really care about the fulfillment they feel doing it and how well and appreciated and treated they have at the workplace. And this is why I have top notch employees for my wholesaling business and the other businesses I run because I treat them like actual people. I want to know and help them out with what they actually want to do. And uh, eventually it works really, really well. So I, I, I do want to add that in. If you are looking to hire people, uh, it's a little harder with VAs to a point, uh, but like it'll help you a lot, especially with me and acquisition staff. Um, it'll help you out. So the next part here, this is a fun one. This is one I make fun of a lot of gurus for because I do it for the show. And it's not for when it actually works. 
So what do I mean by this, right? So a poor mindset in wholesaling, and this is one I see people crash and fail, is they try to scale super, super fast. They try to get the big, the huge team. They get the crazy office. They get 30 cold callers. They get 30 acquisition staff. They treat it like a wolf of Wall Street, and they, they act like they got this big, big operation. And what I could tell you is that was not, you got to run your business lean. You got to run it lean and then start scaling it up slowly. The only way to scale up a wholesaling operation, the correct way to make million, even tens of millions of dollars, and I've seen every single one that's done it the right way, they scaled up slowly. They hired a couple cold callers, got some dispositions people, maybe a little junior acquisitions people, then an acquisitions person, and then a manager, and then a marketing manager, and then they just keep going from there. And then they hire more people. They go virtual, get more VAs. Like, once you start trying to get like six, seven, eight employees at a time, your your margins go down. And then once you hit a couple bad month, months or you know a couple bad deals, like you end up having such a crazy, crazy, more, like crazy carrying costs on the operations. Where if three or four employees quit and they can't do that job, uh, you have two hundred grand you have to spend in overhead, and you might go under, right? And I think a lot of people get that confused. Is like there's a healthy margin for scaling and you got to do it slowly. Right. And I think a lot of people, Warren Buffett says, I love Warren Buffett, but like you got to get rich slow. I can't teach you to get rich fast. I can teach you to get rich slow. And what I mean, slow is different than the average person getting rich. So the average person getting rich is 30, 40, 50 years investing in all that stuff. Right. Like how do you get rich slow? Like how do you get rich in three or four years? Not rich in like a year, not rich in two, three, four weeks. Right. But I call it I call it, I call it small, but like it's really fast if you really look at it. But I call it slow. Like getting rich in three or four years is just going through the phases that I've taught before. It's like phase one, you start getting your grasp. Phase two, you're starting to learn uh, why you're earning, and then three, grow, and then fourth, abundance. And you get into that. Like it's a four year plan. But you be poor making millions of dollars every year. It takes four years, but it's four years of torture. <laughs> and I can tell you from experience, it's four years of torture. But once you get that abundance mindset, you make you could double more the money you made the previous year without working anymore. And it's really cool. Uh, but like you can get you, you got to scale slower. And once you start scaling a little too much, uh, that's when I see a lot of people get a lot, a lot of issues. Um, and I've seen a lot of wholesalers crash and burn. And a lot of them run that big crazy operation in the big offices. And I'm not gonna mention names, but those names you don't even know of anymore because. They got out of the business because they failed and their overhead was too much and they get a little hiccup and it doesn't do well, right? Number 10, the last one, and this is probably one of the most practical advice, but setting unrealistic expectations. I've known 18, 17, 19 teenage real estate wholesalers that come in and talk to me and say, Zach, I'm going to make $5 million this year in wholesaling. I'm going to buy a McLaren. And I'm like, What? And they're like, yeah, I'm going to buy McLaren this year. That's my goal for wholesaling. I'm like, how much money are you making right? I haven't done a deal yet. Uh, six, seven, eight months later, they've gotten two deals and they feel like, like utterly terrible because their expectations aren't there. One quote I want to leave you with, guys, and this is a really bad one. Like this is one that I see a lot of people have issues with, but like, Let me, let me let me just write down um, the secret to happiness for wholesaling. Or I'll call it even life, right? This is the secret formula to a happy life. And I don't want to get in trouble for saying this, but like this is it. Expectations minus reality equals happiness. And what do I mean by that? What you expect, if you minus off what actually happens, that's going to leave you with the happiness. And I don't care whatever equation you want to do. So if you're expecting to make $100,000 this year and you end up making seventy five, dollars most people are going to be a net unhappy with that. And that, that's probably good. You should get better. But overall, you're not going to be happy. Now, if you're expecting $50,000 and you made $75,000, you are going to be ecstatic and happy and excited. It's just a morale thing, morale thing. But like expectations minus reality is equal happiness. So if you set your expectations of like getting some deals, but like just starting to make money and learning from there, 
you're going to be a lot more happy as a person, as an entrepreneur and in general. And I don't know if this is going to help you make any more money, but this is a mindset for you to be happier. And statistically, the happier you are, the better mindset you have. And if you're expecting the world and your results don't equal that, you're going to be really upset with yourself. And that's going to cause a downward spiral versus an upward spiral. Uh, Bill Gates says this, and this is a great quote. I'm losing a lot of billionaire, I don't know, quotes today, but like what you, so I'm going to get the exact quote, but like, it's pretty much, I'll give you the, uh, the summary of it, but like what you expect, most people expect, uh, how do I even say it right? Most people overestimate what they're going to do in the short term but they underestimate what they're going to do in the long term. What that means is most people think they're going to do a lot better than they actually do in the short term of things, one, two, three, four years, but they underestimate what they're going to do in 10, 15, 20 years. If you taught me at 18 years old how much money I was going to make, I would say $300,000 would be like an insane happy goal. Uh, if you look at me in 10, 15, 20 years, that, that's a joke, okay? I'm always going to underestimate how much money I'm going to make in the long term because I do that straight up. Uh, just, just the way how exponential formulas go, it, it, it's exponentially just skyrocket. It just doubles, you know, basically every two, three years, right? And it's kind of funny. Versus in the short term, you might not hit that goal, but over time, look at your income; it just shoots up like a rocket. And once you start looking at life like that, you start looking at things like that. Um, it's going to change uh, a lot for you. So I think a lot of people uh, get really confused with that. But yeah. So yeah, guys, that is the 10 rules that, that I think that's something a lot of people get really confused with in wholesaling real estate. And uh, it's definitely something I wanted to change for a lot of people. So guys, I remember guys, my free real estate wholesaling course is freewholesaling.com below there. Uh, it is a free real estate wholesaling course.